Meanwhile, Syrian rebels led by al-Qaeda linked fighters have seized control of a Christian village northeast of Damascus, forcing hundreds of residents to flee. The prominence of al-Qaeda linked fighters has factored into the reluctance of Western powers to provide direct military support to the rebels. It's also figured in the debate underway in the U.S. Congress over whether to launch military strikes against Syria in retaliation for the chemical weapons attack last month. And now to discuss all that that were joined live on the phone by Nabila Ramdani in London, uh, that's journalist and political analyst. So, first of all, let's uh, talk about the latest interview that Assad gave to CBS. So, he says there is no proof that he is responsible for the chemical attack, basically admitting it did happen. So, what do you think about this statement? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I think President Assad made it clear that uh, his interview uh, giving to, that he's given to CBS, a, a big American news channel, came as a reaction to what he called and his government called the PR blitz of the American administration, who's been embarking on a tour of Europe uh, through uh, the Secretary of State, John Kerry. He was in France yesterday. He's in the UK today. Uh, President Obama himself was in Europe last week, for example, and uh, the way uh, the Syrian president sees it is, as he called it, a PR blitz to try to, uh, you know, play up the rhetoric of war already, and so he's reacting to that. And I think the first thing to note is that Assad uh, came across from the clips we've already seen of the interview as a... rather calm and rational. He spoke in English, for example, to, uh, of course, for his message to reach uh, an American audience. And it it is very much in sharp contrast of, you know, for example, rants we've heard before from dictators uh, uh, like Mubarak or or indeed Gaddafi. So um, he seems to be reacting in par with the PR, uh, perhaps machinery deployed in the U.S., making a case, um, defending his case, that he hasn't used uh, chemical weapons. He denies that uh, adamantly, and he questions uh, the evidence that the Americans uh, say they have. And this, of course, comes in within the legacy of the Iraq war. And um, this will very much be high in the mind of uh, the American public opinion, which is deeply divided, 500 people to one against military intervention uh, in the U.S. US. And it also, the interview comes on the day when the U.S. Congress is starting to reflect on whether or not to get military um, action or to get the U.S. military involved uh, in Syria. So all these, you know, the, the, the Congress is highly divided, deeply divided, and there's an awful lot of skepticism as to the validity of the evidence put forward against Assad. Britain and the U.S. had, of course, both accused uh, Iraq um, and the regime of Saddam Hussein over, um, you know, him holding chemical weapons. It turned out that his evidence was fabricated, and yet, you know, military action was um, launched, and it resulted in thousands of people dying because of that. So it seems that the international community, I mean, that will be, uh, an, th- this is an argument that Assad very much reinforced in his interview. So let's get to this uh, new information. Uh, I mean, if it's proven, as Germany's uh, build suggests, that Assad did not give the order, does that change anything for the way the U.S. sees the whole situation? Uh, I don't believe so. I think the U.S.'s reputation uh, as um, the the, the only superpower, if you will, uh, military superpower, is very much at stake. President Obama has uh, um, made an awful lot of warnings, sent an awful lot of warnings to President Assad about the red line being crossed about the the alleged use of chemical weapons. And it's very much their reputation as which is at stake, their role and status as a world power um, in, uh, you know, in a, hu- a hugely complicated region, which is the Middle East. They, uh, it's not only about, you know, U.S. credibility, but also U.S.'s um, interest in the Middle East. Um, and, and, and therefore, I, I, don't, I don't think we are likely to see a President Obama, you know, taking into account a U.S. Congress. I think he's followed suit, if you want. Uh, he, um, what happened in Britain, the par- British parliamentary vote, very much has had an effect on Obama consulting his own Congress 
Um, but it seems from the rhetoric, the increasing war rhetoric coming out of Washington, that um, President Obama has very, pretty much made up his mind about intervention. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, also, let's get uh, back to Kerry. He, he says there is no military solution. There should be a political solution. So does that sound a bit uh, oralish, uh, double speakish to you? I think what we've seen today, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the press conference that uh, the uh, Foreign Secretary William Hague in the UK and John Kerry, his American counterpart, gave today, it was aimed to show a front of unity uh, between the US and the UK and reinforce the fact that the special relationship was still very much uh, in order, that the relationship was in fact closer than ever. But what it in fact revealed is cracks in the discourse between the UK and the US and indeed their strategy. Uh, John Kerry was evidently uh, here to sell uh, military action uh, in Syria and to put uh, you know, his views about it and, and, and the reasons motivating uh, military action. Whereas William Hague was more talking, putting the emphasis on uh, the need to find a political solution, to need to go back to diplomacy, and indeed the need to reinforce humanitarian aid. And he reminded, uh, you know, the world audience that the UK is the second donor after the US in terms of humanitarian aid. So it, you know, it revealed it was this press conference was meant to show solidarity and unity, but it very much revealed cracks in terms of strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Nabila Ramdani in London. She's a journalist and a political analyst.